hello everyone welcome to our channel oh my gosh you give me smooches such a good boy okay i just did a big old chip in the yard i put my poo in the yard like a good boy because he's a good boy yes well hello everyone welcome back um today we're gonna be doing a little q a get ready with me we're gonna talk a little bit more about what life has been like i'm gonna answer a lot of your questions you guys had a lot of questions for me over on instagram i think i'm probably just gonna talk and then revisit the questions because i've already looked at them and a lot of you guys have a lot of the same questions and then you guys had other questions that were unrelated to the dog so i'm gonna go over everything today i hope you enjoy and let's get ready first off he is my shadow he is obsessed with me um he loves reuben too but it took him a little bit of time to get used to to Ruben. Same thing happened with pretzel. Pretzel still is very weird around men. You do my makeup while I'm just rambling. I'm going to go into the Embryolise moisturizer and then I'm going to mix it with Color Science Flex uh, tinted sunscreen in the shade medium. But yeah, I was just telling Ruben the other day that I wish pretzel would like hang out with me while I did my makeup and while I like filmed videos up here, but she's just so independent she just like stays downstairs but i was like you know maybe i need to get her like a bed for upstairs somewhere for her to sit because like maybe that's part of it and now we have this guy and he just like just follows me and wants to be around me and then if he like leaves my side for a second he always comes back to see like what i'm up to and what i'm doing and he just like wants to sit here and um the makeup tutorial i filmed last the like the like fresh spring glam or whatever he sat right next to me the entire time it's just so cute it's so sweet he's like my little pal um so i got a lot of questions on like how we got the dog which i did explain in the last video so if you missed my video where i was like announcing it which by the way no one has got mad at me for that clickbaity title but <laughs> and technically it wasn't clickbait because we did expand our family but I knew what I was doing with that title of the video. I've never done anything like that before with a title. And I just thought, you know what? Now's my time. Everybody else does clickbaity shit on the internet. I'm going to do it. And I'm glad I did it. And I'm glad that none of you guys were like annoyed. Um, but I knew exactly what I was doing. Anyway, how we got him. So in that video, I do go over it. A lot of you guys had questions about like how... Did we get him, get him? Like, did I go get him? Did Ruben get him? All that stuff. So basically in the last video, I explained that Ruben was at work and the whole time he was there, he was like telling me about this dog when he would come home. Or like if we'd check in on each other throughout the day, like he'd be like, oh, there's this dog nearby. He's so cute. He just looks like a little pretzel, um, but like light haired, you know, all this stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh, so cute, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, pretty sure he's a stray. I've asked around, nobody knows whose dog it is. He's checked in with people. And there's also like, it was just a really bad area where he was working. Finally, after a while, Ruben was like, do you want me to get this dog? And immediately I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, if he kind of already had like this bond with the dog almost, cause he would like feed the dog cause he's like so scrawny and whatnot. Um, and clearly outside and didn't have shelter. Like he was in really rough shape. So Ruben like already, I think had like just this connection with this dog because he felt for it and he was the one seeing him every day. And I'm like, yeah, like you want, if you want the dog, I want the dog. I've ne I didn't even meet the dog. And I knew just from like, photos of him and how like Ruben was describing him. It was like, he obviously needs a home. I did think like, how is Pretzel going to handle this? And how is she gonna be with this dog? But at the same time, I also know that like, if she hated the dog, we would find him a, a different home that loves him just as much as we would have if she just like wasn't having it. Cause that's no life for him either to, to live in a house where like the dog hates him. You know what I mean? So Ruben fed him and was able to grab him. We took him in, saw if he was chipped and everything. And now officially he's ours. And that's how it went down. I never even met him until Ruben brought him to, um, we brought him to his parents' house actually. I talked about in my last video how I watched this video on how to integrate a new dog into a house where you already have a dog and so I go over all of that in that video and you can actually check the video that I linked in that description box. So you can see that, like if you're in a sim similar situation or thinking about incorporating another dog into your 
household. Um, it went swimmingly, so I highly recommend to check out that video. But yeah, we took him to his parents' house and that's where I met the dog before I even brought Pretzel over just to see just to see the situation. I checked out his teeth. Like I did all of these things, checked if he had fleas. I went through his poop. Like I just wanted to make sure he didn't have like worms and parasites. And obviously we were taking him to the vet to like get all of that checked out too. But I just wanted to do like a first once over. But yeah, instantly just like obsessed with him. He was just licking my ears and like snoofing me and like just so sweet. But like you could tell just like scared every noise he is just like you know so attentive to the first day but yeah instantly loved him and i'm so glad i'm so glad nobody i mean it's sad that nobody like claimed him but at the same time i obviously i'm so happy because i am so happy to have him in our life so that is how that went down um yeah did not meet him until reuben got him and someone asked if reuben just like surprised me with the dog <laughs> which if he did by the way i would have still been happy that would not bother me at all because he and i are just like on the same page and like whatever but he did call me and text me for like the week prior just to like I was in the know on what was happening and it actually happened when I was at Amanda's house, we were working and he called me and he was like, yeah, so I got like a dog in my passenger seat. I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, so it all just happened so fast, even though like we had talked about it prior, um, especially because we didn't, we didn't want to go like snatching up a dog that was someone else's dog. We needed to make sure that he was like, abandoned and astray and like all the things. When it happened, it just felt like it all happened so fast and it didn't even set in until honestly recently, like the last couple days, it started to really sink in that like we have another dog. So that's how all that went down. And I'm so happy. Um, I used the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer, by the way. I am gonna go in with just a little bit more because I have a little breakout. I'm still on my different journey and I'm loving it. I used it last night. I didn't use it, I actually, <laughs> All week long, I haven't done any skincare. I didn't wear any makeup all week, so it felt good to do a little different last night. I love that you guys are on the same track as far as names go with this dog. I know I shared like, oh, I like food names and I only shared a couple, but like I have a list of like 25 names or so. All of you guys are saying every name, like even names that I don't have on my list, but like we've verbalized out loud to each other, you guys have said, and it's just so funny that we're like right on the same track. There's a couple names though, where there are reasons why we haven't named him that so like for instance pringle that would be such a cute name it's just so close to pretzel that i don't want to be like disciplining pringle and then she thinks it's for her because they sound very similar and then the other one bagel i love that name but it sounds a lot like beagle and reuben had a dog named rex that we would always just call him beagle or beags and so bagel kind of sounds like that and so it just it, I don't know, it's not like connecting for me, but at the same time, that is such a cute name. The other thing is, I know a lot of times people will say bagel like bagel, and it drives me insane. So if someone called him bagel instead of bagel, it would be like nails on a chalkboard. So I don't know, we're still just like calling him Mr. and Sir. So I don't know, It's I can't believe he still doesn't have like a definitive name. I also like Dewey, like from Malcolm in the Middle. He has such a Dewey personality, like sweet, kind, adorable, but like scrappy and like, you know what I mean? If you've seen that show, he is like a Dewey personality. And so I think that also fits him, but I do like the food name. So we're just really torn. We will see, we'll find something soon, but <laughs> yeah, I do like that you guys are all on the same page as far as names go. Um, and who knows, we might do the Pringle, we might do Bagel. I did also like waffle or waffles. I think that's so cute. And some things it's like, it needs to be easy to say. I do feel like bagel is a hard word to say. Also like someone said something about having two P names, which would be nice. Cause I have a P necklace that has the letter P for pretzel. I'm like, oh, that would be nice to not have to like have another um, initial. Jump into more of these questions. Also, as far as like names go, I'm gonna be vlogging today and I'll go over all of like more name things um, and like my reservations for things. I do like human names. And it's funny cause a lot of human names that I like are like 
people in our life that we know, unfortunately. So I like, can't go naming my dog a human name of someone that I know. You know what I mean? So I'll go over all of that in the vlog, um, which will probably be out right after this video. So if you want more info on that, stay tuned. So how's Pretzel adapting to the new dog? Another one, does she love her new brother? I posted a picture, I'll post it here too, of when Pretzel met him. She <laughs> was just kind of like, when is he leaving? <laughs> She's just so spoiled and loves us so much and loves having all of the attention. And actually today, I have noticed because he is so glued to me. She's kind of been a little bit salty with me. I'm giving him so much attention and I am giving her attention too. But even with that, she's still just, I can tell she's annoyed with me. So we're gonna go on a walk today. I'm gonna do a short one with both of them. And then later on, I'm gonna take her alone and do the long one with her just so she has that one-on-one -on -one time with me because I am missing that. Um, and same with our morning routine. I don't want him in the bed. Again, because pretzel is there and that's kind of like her space and like I think keeping him in the crate would be good especially because like potty training which I will get to there's a lot of questions on that as well um but yeah she is definitely warming up to him a lot and she's like letting him like, share her space we've been really adamant about letting her set her own boundaries and we follow through with that as well so like if he's there's a difference. Like if he is interested in like wanting to play or whatever, and she, you know, is kind of like teasing with him. Like we can tell when she's into it and when she's not, and when she like wants her distance. So when she wants her distance, we make sure he leaves her alone so that she knows that like we've got her back. And he also knows like when she's done and not into it anymore. The mounting thing has gotten so much better. The first couple days, that's like all he wanted to do, but we've been so, like I have not let my eyes be off of him really for the whole week and a half. So anytime he would mount her, we would just tell him no and get him off of her. And he's a really good listener. He just like seems, oh no, no, we're not chewing that. See, and he listens, as soon as I tell him no, he'll stop. Like he just wants to learn and wants to like please us and he just wants to, do what pretzel does like she's such a good leader for him and he just wants to follow and do what she does he is just a little copycat which another name that i liked is pete um, which could be like Petey from little rascals or pete from the office um and also it made me think of like pete and repeat because he just like repeats everything that she does so i think that's also a cute name the last like three days i have not seen him try to mount her which thank you for all of the info a lot of you guys told me um in the comments on the last video that that is actually more of a sign or can be more of a sign of um, him trying to assert dominant dominance which makes sense because he's in a new space and like she's top dog so he like of course wants to assert his dominance but yeah he hasn't really been doing that anymore which is great he just more so has more energy than her because he's a puppy and he just wants to play all the time which a lot of times she does indulge him but a lot of times she's just like such a chill cozy little dog like she just wants to like curl up and nap and be snoogly and like she likes her space even with us like before he was even around she likes her independence and she likes her space so we just have to make sure that like when she is vocal <laughs> about wanting her space that he respects it and so far so good i mean we still have to be on him but for it only being as short of a time as it as it's been he's doing really well so back to the potty training thing it's actually been quite easy we've absolutely had some accidents probably five potty accidents um he peed he lifted his leg on the couch and i was like oh fuck, no we're not gonna do that um so he's only done that once the other few times that he's pottied it's been on the rug it just so happened that during this time of us taking him in it has rained every single day it has been cold it has been snowing and sleeting it's gorgeous today which i'm so eager to be done with this not not to be done with the video but to like go outside and enjoy the day because it's gonna get up to i think 55 ish today and it's sunny and i just want to be outdoors because we have been cooped up and it's been so difficult um not it just hasn't been the most ideal week for potty training because it's been so rainy and cold and like every time we come in we have to wipe the paws and also we have to wipe his wingding 
let this is gonna be gross but whatever we're gonna talk about his pee pee because apparently boy dogs secrete this goo and i googled it because i was like is this an infection it can be an infection but it doesn't give infection vibes um from what i've researched it's they call it segmum and it's like the stuff that like secretes from the penis and like protects it or whatever i don't know but we've had spots of like green goo on our couch and it's like and he just likes to sprawl out drags his crotch all over the place and so i was like hold on this is gonna be a problem neutering can help we'll get to that next as well it's been very helpful now that i like once i noticed what was going on because she pretzel never had that the boy dogs that like my parents had they didn't have that but they were also neutered so I, this is new territory for me could talk to my vet obviously so now when he goes to the bathroom every time we go potty outside when we come inside i've been wiping his paws because it's been rainy but also i've been wiping off his dingling and that seems to be helping we haven't had as many spots but there's been a couple and i'm just i don't want little yellow green pee pee stains I checked literally like four times to make sure that it's not an infection and it doesn't look infected at all from what uh i've researched online so um obviously a good question for my vet still but anyway i had a lot of questions about if we're gonna neuter him or not we have not decided we're not against it we're not for it either it's just kind of like we're indifferent and we're gonna figure it out pretzels neutered at the same time i I've heard that neutering is good for the dog, especially when they're young, like to do it young and it can apparently prevent health problems. But at the same time, I'm kind of a hippie in that way where I'm like, how is that possible? Like maybe leaving them in their like normal form is probably better. But what do I know? That I'm just ignorant to the topic and I need to do more research and look up more information. I'm gonna talk to my vet, see what's the best. Um, but if you care to share any information on that, if you know, clearly more of you know more than me about that topic, feel free to share down below in the comments. Is two dogs your maximum amount that you'll have? I have no idea, to be honest. Like, like I said in my last video, if you would have asked me if we were gonna get Pretzel a sibling, literally last week, I would have said no. <laughs> So never say never. I think I'm very comfortable at two. But at, at the same time, now that we've brought in two, I'm like, I don't know. Like, what's a third? <laughs> I, I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, we'll just see how it goes. It's, it hasn't been that long since we've had him. Someone else asked, like, is two better than one? I don't know. We've, we've had him for such a short amount of time. I do not know. With anything you have to acclimate, I think it's been so easy bringing him in because Pretzel is such a good dog. She's potty trained. We have little things that like, I just didn't even know that we really had implemented in our life that's made having Pretzel so easy. Like for instance, when we open the door after leaving the house, when we come home, she knows to sit and wait until the door shuts and then she comes and runs and greets us. And so things like that, cause like, again, I've talked about this before, we live on a very busy street. I don't even remember us like teaching her that, but like we have apparently <laughs> over the last few years. And like, he's already, he already knows to do that. He already knows not to just run when the door opens and greet us right away. He knows to sit patient and they're both just like so excited. And then we shut the door and they come running. So things like that, that we have implemented with her that like he's already doing. And so in a way it's been like so easy to incorporate him into our lives. And I think that it's because we have her and like have taught her all these things. And this is not dog related, but I got a question about my hair and like what I'm thinking for my hair appointment. I want like more natural, more blonde. Like what am I thinking? Guys, I don't know. I am like, I'm really, loving the natural and i think what i'm going to do is really bring that through even more i think that because i have the lighter hair on the bottom i think that's giving the illusion that this hair up here is darker and i think if i had more of this color throughout overall my hair would appear lighter than this does because it doesn't have that contrast. Um, I'm just loving the low maintenance. I love how healthy my hair is. I don't really wanna to commit to having highlights again. At the same time though, I've been looking back at videos and pictures and things of when I had like really, really bright bleach blonde hair and it's that love for that is still in me. But 
I think that a lot of it comes down to just my self-confidence in general. And I'm gonna be very candid. I have not felt myself, I haven't felt like, like me in my own skin in a couple years now. Like literally since end of 2021, I have not felt comfortable in my skin. And I think that it's, I don't know, it's a little uncomfortable to like openly say that on the internet because I'm not looking for validation. I'm not looking for people to tell me like, oh my God, you look amazing or whatever. Like I'm really, I don't, I don't even like to talk about it because I just don't like speaking it out into the world. I like to just try to stay positive, move on and do the things to keep myself healthy. I just, there's been a lot that's, I've worked through the last couple of years that like it's shown up on me physically and I'm working to get it off, like get like extra weight off and like deal with stressful things. Um, someone asked me like, what stressful things am I going through? I'm not sharing that. I keep a lot of things private in my life. So yeah, I just, I don't even know why I'm sharing this. I, I hate talking about this topic just because I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I just like don't want it to be real, I guess. And so the other part is like, I don't, I'm done. I feel like I talk about it a lot with like close people in my life. And I just, I'm the kind of person where it's like, if, if I'm gonna complain about something or vent or whatever, I also need to like act. You know what I mean? I feel like I can only vent for so long or deal with venting for so long. If there's gonna be venting or complaining or whatever, then eventually there needs to be like action because at that point, then you're just like a negative Nancy. And that's how I felt with this topic because it's been so long. Now there has been effort and obviously like I leave a, I lead a very healthy lifestyle. I eat healthy, you know, whatever. Clearly there's something else going on. I don't, I don't want advice. I don't want, you know what I mean? Like I don't want all those things. All of that to say, I know the hair thing and with me wanting to be blonde has more to deal with weight. And I know that sounds so weird and so uncorrelated, but it is. I know that if I felt comfortable in the way that my body looks, I would feel confident in whatever hair color that I had in especially my natural hair color. So I have to keep reminding myself of that because I keep wanting, I keep almost like thinking, oh, I should bleach my hair. And I know it just sounds so silly, I know, but that's kind of where I'm at right now is I'm just so, I had gotten to a place where I'm like so desperate to feel like myself, which is so funny because someone else asked me how I stay so positive and they said I was inspiring, which thank you for saying that. I think that I, I like to mainly share positive things and I like to be optimistic because what's the alternative? being fucking miserable and I've been that. And I think that that is my, what's the word? That's what I always end up feeling initially. And then I have to like retrain my brain to take the more positive path because otherwise what are you gonna do? You're just gonna sulk in negativity and sulk in like being pessimistic. That's no way to live. It's so miserable. And for me, that is my autopilot. That is where I go naturally and it takes a lot of effort to retrain myself to be more positive and optimistic and um, look at the glass half full to where that is my norm. So when it comes to like being positive and optimistic on the internet, I just like, I don't like to, I just don't like to be negative, especially just outwardly. And like, I would never want to be so negative and pessimistic because then that's the type of energy that I'm going to attract back. And I don't want that. I have gotten rid of that in my life. It feels amazing to be surrounded by such loving, positive people. Now that's not to say fake positivity of like, oh, everything's amazing all the time. No, you can go through real shit. And like I said, you can vent about things and complain about things to an extent. If life becomes a constant negative story, you are always the victim, which I have had that mentality before. It's just not good to be around. It's not a fun thing to be around. So for me, I always like, try to address that and I hope that other people people in my life hold me accountable for that too because I don't want to be that way that's why like when I was talking about the whole hair thing it's like this is what I'm feeling this is my thought process with that but I don't even want to like sit on that conversation for too long because it's like 
I just don't want to identify with those feelings. Like I don't want to feel those things. And I feel like by speaking them outwards and sharing them, it becomes more real where I would like to speak more positively. You know what I mean? That is just kind of how I feel. And I think being negative is pretty common and I think it is relatable. I think that it's very easy to feel negatively about things and it is very hard to retrain the brain. I always like to think of my brain as a muscle, kind of like the muscles on your body that you train to get stronger. I think of the brain in that same way and it can be done. If you are a very negative, pessimistic person, and have that victim mentality of like, life is against you, of course this would happen to me, that sort of a mindset, just know that can change. That's not just who you are. I used to think that. I used to think that that was just who I am. And now I understand that that's not true. That is just a mindset. Having a victim mindset, a poverty mindset, a lack mindset, it can change. It's not just, oh, this is just who I am. This is what life has made me. This is what I'm born to be. You can change anything about you that you don't like. And if you feel negative and constantly icky, you can change it if you want to. And I'm here to tell you that you can because I've done it. And again, I still tend to lean in those thought processes. I'll, I'll just go there and I have to constantly fix it and remind myself that those are just thoughts. That's not who I am and move on. You know what I mean? I hope that was helpful. Thank you for thinking that I am so positive and whatever, because sometimes I feel like I'm not at all. So I'm glad that that's how it comes across. Um, so I guess it's just not necessarily a fake it till you make it kind of thing, but it is just sort of like, just trying to switch those negative thought processes into more positive ones. Ultimately will make you a more positive person. Anyway, that was such a long rant about my hair. <laughs> Um, someone asked about my favorite Sephora products. I just did a Sephora recommendations video for the sale that's going on right now. Um, check that out. I'll link it down below if I remember or up here. Um, but I go over recommendations for the sale, like what's in my cart, but also what my favorite products are. How do you keep your house so clean with your dogs? So thank you for thinking my house is clean <laughs> because I swear it's a constant battle. I think everyone has this battle, just even with not having dogs, just in general, like keeping your house clean. It's a full time job. I try to do one deep clean once a week. Saturdays are my favorite days to do it, which is actually today. Today is Saturday. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it goes like every other week where I can do a nice deep clean, but I do try to do that once a week. And then throughout the week, I straighten up as much as I can. The other thing too, like especially with dogs, I think just like potty training them is huge. Making sure that they're going outside is huge so that you don't have to worry about having to like clean up after them all the time. One thing with Mr. New Dog is the hair. He sheds so much more than pretzel. I'm so curious what he is because the shedding is insane <laughs> um, already. So today I'm gonna vlog after this and I'm gonna show the dust bunnies in my kitchen and in my living room. And it is two weeks since I did my last full house clean. So it has gone longer than normal, but the hair is way more than usual. So something that I'm gonna be doing to keep up on that more, cause now that's a big change, is vacuuming just throughout the week. We've got like a little Dyson that isn't like too heavy that we can just quickly clean up, you know? The other thing is our couch is really like stain resistant, which I just love. We have the Restoration Hardware Cloud Couch. And I think it's not even necessarily that it's that brand of couch. It's the fabric, the perennials fabric, and apparently you can get the perennials fabric from anywhere, or I don't know. Yeah, the linen perennials fabric, which if a dog pees or anything, it just kind of like sits on top. And it's not like a Scotch guard. It's not like something that's sprayed on the couch. It's the fabric itself, apparently. Um, I have gotten blood out of that couch, mud, wine, gooey pee spots. I've gotten all that out of the couch, no problem, like barely any effort at all. But um, I try to wash those actual cushion covers once every two months, I would say. I just unzip them and I throw them in the laundry. But um, just like wiping the dog's paws whenever it's like muddy or they've like stepped in something is huge. Those are my tips. Again, I think I'm good at making it look like things are clean around here when they're actually not. So keep that in mind. People's houses are the cleanest when you're there. 
and when they post online. So keep, just remember that. This place can look horrible so fast and it has nothing, usually nothing to even do with the dogs. It has to do with everything with us and being messy. So keep that in mind. I just realized I was not sharing like anything that I was using because I was just talking your ear off. So everything will be linked down below in the description box. I did use the MAC Studio Fix Sculpt and Shaped Contour, Shaped, <laughs> Sculpt and Shape Contour Palette love this and i just mixed these bottom three shades together we've got bone beige taupe and sculpt um, i used that to contour and then i used this tart blush which is discontinued but they have one that looks identical this is doll face i've been loving it look how beautiful and bright that is but like it doesn't look that crazy on me right like it just goes on really subtle um they have one that looks identical to this so i will link that one down below because i could not find this one. Oh, and i used the hourglass diffused bronzer which i need to maybe i should add this to my cart for the sephora sale because we are almost out of that and i do not want to run out i'm gonna highlight with the film star bronze and glow palette and then i'm gonna use my finger to highlight the nose and also pop this on the cupid's bow. Okay, brows are done. I'm gonna prime my eyes. Painterly Paint Pot, my favorite. And I really don't know what I wanna do for my eyes today. So I am gonna use the Patrick Ta eyeshadow palette. Whip up something. I'm gonna start with this color and then I'll probably go into this one and then this one and we'll, we'll see what happens here. I've actually had a lot of questions about food on here. So I'll touch on it a little bit, um, just about like how often do I eat out? Um, what do I eat when I go out? And also like how I deal with like food cravings and things like that. So um, it's always a little bit different as far as like going out to eat. I do love to go out to eat, but to be honest, I end up <laughs> enjoying the food that I can make at home much better. It just tastes so much better. It's better quality and all that. But but usually I would say a couple times a month. Sometimes sometimes it's more often than others. Like sometimes it's only once a month. Sometimes it's once a week. It really just depends. But I really do try to eat at home the majority of the time. Even like going out for coffee, I've been <laughs> drinking a lot less coffee lately, which I never thought that I would say that, but... I have been. Now this week is an exception because I kind of went back to, not kind of, I went back to drinking a lot more coffee, but I've even been experimenting with doing just black coffee as well, which is new for me. So yeah, I think, I mean, I've just gone through some changes right now. Someone else asked me like how I'm doing right now. I'm actually doing pretty darn well, despite uh, the chaos of life, but I don't know, I'm going through, like there's just been a lot of change over the last, however long and it's funny like last year I did a lot of work in life just with myself um went to therapy did that whole thing um I haven't been back in a long time and honestly like I don't really think that I'll be back anytime soon I feel like I got what I needed out of it I I saw this clip from a podcast where someone was talking about constantly talking about your problems this kind of goes back to what I was talking about earlier but like I wonder Cause I felt this way for myself as well. Like constantly talking about what's going wrong cannot be beneficial. Um, and I guess everybody's different, but that's kind of where I got to. It was like, okay, I'm ready to move on. <laughs> like I'm ready to like, I don't know. And so sometimes I think not with, not everyone, not all the time. I'm not just talking so specific about everyone, but I think that it can be common where people get stuck going and talking about their problems all the time. And then they just keep like ruminating in them. You know what I mean? I, I know someone specifically that does that. They've created a lot of issues just because they're constantly talking about problems and like then they end up making more problems. You know what I mean? So that was something that like, I, I did the therapy thing, I did all that and like, I just feel like I, I used it for a time. And one thing I loved about my therapist that I saw is that when I went there, she's like, our goal is for you to not come back. <laughs> like our goal is for you to feel good. Like, and, and you know what I mean? And I loved that. Anyway, I'm glad that last year I did all that and it served me in a really good way because now I just, I feel like I worked on things that I never would have worked on, even though life is just, you know, I think for a lot of people, life is just lifing, you know? And even though it is, I just feel 
very calm lately and I feel like comfortable with just the unknown, you know? and going with the flow. My word for the year this year is flow. And I feel like I've been doing that. Some things that I've learned is that it's okay to let go. It's okay to ask for help with things. It's okay to let people down. That's just kind of like where I'm at. And I've just been kind of like, just going with the flow of life. Clearly I just got a new freaking dog. <laughs> Overall, I've been good. Thank you for asking me that. That's really sweet. I've been loving posting on YouTube. I was looking back at old videos just from like last year. I feel like last year was like probably one of my hardest years it just in life. And um, I was looking back at this one video and I was like just talking about like, I was just so stuck. And to be honest, sometimes I still feel that way. But lately I've just been like so uninterested in what other people are doing. One of the questions that, you, that someone asked me is like, where do you go for inspiration? Like who on Instagram do you follow for inspiration? Literally nobody. I don't follow anybody for inspiration anymore. Like the people that I follow are genuinely because I'm wanting to support and I like what they're doing, but I'm not looking to them for inspiration. And it wasn't until I saw this question that I really got to thinking about it. And I have now been, the way that I start my morning, like the first thing, like once I finally go on my phone, which I try not to go into my phone, like first thing, um, I wait a while and I've been journaling, which, journaling is just so wonderful. When I do finally get on my phone, I go on Pinterest and I've been just creating little vision boards for little things and I keep them private. I used to have them public, but I feel like I enjoy keeping them really close to my heart. I go on there for inspiration and it's not even because I'm looking at other people and what they're doing and I wanna be like that person. It's more about those pictures exemplify me and my heart. <laughs> That sounds so deep and cheesy, but that's like how it feels. Feels like those aren't other people. They feel like me. You know what I mean? So that's where I go for my inspiration um, and to just keep me going. Um, and it has to be a positive thing. If it, if it ever goes into like a jealousy type of place, I don't pin it to my thing, which it, actually now that I'm thinking about it, I don't have those feelings. Yeah, I haven't felt those feelings in a long time of like envy and jealousy towards other people online. Um, and part of that too, I think is because I just like really have not been on TikTok at all. And it's not even from a place of, I need to get off. I shouldn't be on here so much. It just genuinely naturally happened. And I have no interest in being on there. I've ever been on a Caribbean cruise? No, and you never will find me there. I, being on a cruise does not sound like fun to me. Nothing about it sounds good, literally nothing. Any positive you could say about a cruise does not interest me, so. <laughs> No, the only time, the only time you would ever see me on a cruise is in Alaska. But even then, it's like, ugh, I really don't wanna do that. But there's just some things in Alaska that I feel like you can't see unless you're like doing a cruise. So that's the only time I would consider it, but no. How does one make friends as an adult? Help, LOL. Check out, I have a couple podcast episodes on this topic, but I will talk a little bit about it here as well, which also a lot of you guys are asking about the podcast and when the next season's coming out. Um, it's coming out very soon, sooner than you probably think, um, but we are starting to record this week actually, and I will be putting, um, I think today, some like questions on Instagram for you guys to contribute to for the next couple episodes that are coming out. So um, stay tuned for that, but head over to Instagram so that you can participate and be a part of the podcast. If you didn't know, I have a podcast called In Her Skin with my friend Amanda. Um, and we come out uh, We come out with a new episode every Monday. I do have um, a few episodes on friendships on the podcast because then she and I can go into it a lot more. Um, but yeah, how to make friends as an adult. It is definitely difficult. I think that you just have to, number one, not force it. Number two, be like be the person that you want to be so that you can attract the people that you want to attract. If there are people in your life that aren't exemplifying like what you want in a friendship or in like who you would wanna be as a person, maybe that's not someone that you should be spending all your time with. I'm not saying that you have to cut people out of your life. I think people have gotten so good at like cutting this person out. If someone's extremely toxic, yes, absolutely. But you can still have people in your life and keep your distance from them at the same time. Um, but I think, I love that quote and I've said it a million times, like you are the average of the, 
however many people you spend your time with. And I think that that is just so true. So if the people that you are spending your time with are like not the kind of people you wanna spend your time with, take that into account because then you need to make space for people to, co to come into your life. And I think that that was something that I had to do. Being the person that I wanna be, doing the activities that I wanna do, and once I did that, it made space, like more space for friends to come in. I got more friends that just like naturally came into my life. I think going out and being the person that you wanna be and that you would want in a friendship, you're gonna attract those type of, types of people. Find an activity that you like. Do you like reading books? Do a book club. Do you like um, working out? Go to the gym. Maybe go to class. I feel like that's easier than like lifting weights and meeting people, you know? Join a local run club, a bike club, a walk club. I feel like I'm missing stuff, but we talk about it in a couple of our episodes. So check those out. I think like more than anything, it doesn't even come down to like how how to make them it's more about what's going in your life right going on in your life right now do you have space for these new friends and how do you feel about the friendships in your life currently and I think that makes all the difference I'm just hating the forehead my forehead I put way too much bronzer on it and I look insane I look insane I love this shade in this palette it's such a beautiful like vanilla shade and it has a slight bit of sheen it's so beautiful. Sometimes, well, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'll do the inner corner and the brow, and then I'll also go in with something a little bit more shimmery, just at like the very inner corner, because then this is like bright around it, and then it just adds like beautiful dimension. I love it. Do the brow. I'm gonna use the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara in, maybe it's called chocolate or something, I don't know. Um, I've been really liking brown mascara. Love the brown. I think that looks so pretty. I'm gonna sneeze shit. <laughs> Did I, damn it! It's the worst. You have to sneeze after putting on mascara. Oh, you got it all under your eye. Damn it, that happens to me a lot. I'm gonna do a spoolie first. That is the most uncomfortable feeling. Blech. With this, and a little powder and it should be good. For my lips, um, I've been loving just putting Vaseline on my lips and letting it soak in. And I feel like it really brings out the natural color in my lips. Cause they look so pink right now and I don't have anything on them. Just the Vaseline that's now like pretty much all the way gone. I'm gonna be using the new Kim, uh, Skin by Kim lip liners today. Cause I've been using them lately and I've been liking them. I have Nude 3, Nude 8, and Nude 6. Um, nude 6 is my least favorite. It goes very, very cool toned. I think I'm gonna start with Nude 3 because this is a little bit more pinky. And I'm gonna put this around the border first. Okay, and then turn it on its side and blend it in. Oh, it's so pretty, it's just a nice, light color i've just been really into like just like a more medium of a nude for my complexion um just like the last couple of years this is more of a nude that i used to do more frequently back like a couple of years ago and i just think it looks i think because i have on this yellow and more of it like a neutral eye i'm really liking the vibes i think it looks really springy okay i do want to deepen this up a little bit on the edges though which really quick sometimes i think it's one person in particular but anytime i don't do lipstick people get mad at me and like i don't fucking get it because if i didn't do lipstick you would have no idea you'd have no idea and sometimes i just don't put on lipstick and i'll just do lip liner because it's the same exact thing. It's just lipstick usually is more like hydrating. A lip liner, if you put it all over your lips, looks the fucking same. So if you're gonna come for me for not wearing lipstick, you wouldn't have known if I didn't tell you. Leave me alone with my lip liner. You do you, you cannot tell. You cannot tell. You can't tell. Anyway, just saying, and I think it lasts the same. It's just a preference. It's a preference. Let me be. And sometimes I'll just do lip liner like this and put a little Vaseline on. Mm, looks so hydrated and moisturized. It's the same fucking thing. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna go into nude eight now. Um, it's a little bit darker and just pop this on the edges to give this a little bit of definition. See, it just kind of like adds a little bit more of a shadow. 
And for the person that wants me to wear lipstick, this is for you. I'm gonna go into Bitch Perfect from Charlotte Tilbury. Not that wasn't to call you a bitch. <laughs> just realized how that sounded. I love you. Um, this is called Bitch Perfect, but it this looks a lot like what I have on my lips. So it's gonna add a little bit more of a sheen. So I will be applying this just for you, just for you. Can you tell a difference? No, that's where you can tell a difference, but I feel like it wasn't much of a difference. Anyway, I am gonna finish the look with Morphe the setting spray. I am like out of this though. We'll see if this gleeks on me. I always have to remember to like clean off my earrings when I'm done doing my makeup because I get like foundation and bronzer and like everything on top of it and then they look muddy and gross. Oh my gosh, I know, what am I doing with that fan? He's so sweet. He's just like cuddled up next to me, got his head on my lap and just like sleeping and just curious. That's everything for this video. Thank you so much for watching it and hanging out with me and doing makeup together. This is the look, nothing crazy. I like the neutralness of it and the more, it's a little bit of a lighter, peachier lip. Um, I'm glad I didn't do my hair today. I'm kind of like digging this hair clip. I've just got it in a little claw clip here. Yeah, thank you for asking your questions. We're just so excited about this new little doggy. I would show you him right now, but he's sleeping. Thank you for all of your name recommendations. I just think it's so funny that the name recommendations that you have are literally already on our list, the majority of them, which is so funny. I like that I gave you just a couple examples and then you guys were right on the same track. So um, I'm glad that we are right there with each other. And yeah, I'm so excited for this next season of life. That's what it feels like. I feel like the last couple of years, things have just been like shifting in life. And I feel like this just new, like so many changes have happened in the last like six months even that like, I don't know. I'm just excited to go with the flow and thanks for being here and being along for the ride. So um, please subscribe. I will be posting a vlog next um, and you can see a little behind the scenes of life with the new dog. And I'll also be doing a favorites video. I'm gonna film that next actually. So that will be out this week as well. So um, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.